Okay, welcome to the channel The Dental Educators. I'm your tutor, Dr. Zishan, and I'll be discussing about the development of crown. Basically, the tooth crown. That is the basic understanding we will be doing this lecture. In the coming following lectures, we will be discussing it more in detail, like talking about the genes and different type of factors which are basically influencing the development of the crown of the tooth. So initially, when we start discussing about the development of tooth's crown, before that, we need to know what are the structures which are basically involved in the development of the crown. So the first structure in the development of the crown is basically the primary epithelial band. So what is the primary epithelial band? At the 37th day of gestation, we see a continuous thickened epithelium forms around the upper and lower arch. So if you see here, it's a kind of a U-shaped band, horseshoe shaped, or you can say it's a U-shaped band corresponding to the upper and the lower arch, that is the maxillary or the mandibular arch. So the primary epithelial band is basically composed of three different layers. The first one is the oral epithelium. Obviously, this is epithelial, so in the outermost layer, which we see in the oral cavity is referred as the oral epithelium. So we can say that it's ectodermal in origin because ever, always the epithelium is ectodermal in origin. Then just below to the oral epithelium is the basement membrane, which is a separating media between the oral epithelium and the connective tissue. So we can see here the dark blue colored cells are basically representing the oral epithelium whereas the greenish line is an irregular line or irregular cells which are present between the oral epithelium and the connective tissue so we can call the connective tissue cells as the mesodermal cells or the ectomesenchymal cells as well so what happens the primary epithelial band gives rise to two different structures one is known as the vestibular lamina and the other one is known as the dental lamina. So what is the difference between these two structures? The vestibular lamina will help in the formation of the vestibule. There is a space between the teeth and the cheek if you feel it with your tongue. That is referred as the vestibule. So the particular part of the oral epithelium or the epithelium which is involved in formation of the vestibule is known as the vestibular lamina and the particular part of the primary epithelial band which is involved in formation of the tooth is referred as the dental lamina okay so first the dental lamina is formed later on the vestibular lamina is fo uh, formed but as the discussion for the dental lamina is more in detail so we will first focus over the vestibular lamina that half of the vestibular lamina helps in the formation of the vestibule. Talking about the vestibular lamina, it's a normal kind of epithelial lining as we saw in the last page. Later on, what happens, some portion of the primary epithelial band in which or which will be involved in formation of the vestibule will start to proliferate. So you can see the epithelium starts to proliferate or grow inside the connective tissue okay so once we have the dental lamina formed the vestibular cells or the vestibular lamina cells they proliferate or grows inside the connective tissue so again we have still the intact cells of the vestibular lamina epithelium and the connective tissue cells just uh, which are basically separated by the basement membrane which has an irregular layer okay so somewhere here, this portion will help in the formation of the future tooth. Okay, so we refer that as the dental lamina. Dental comes from the word tooth. Okay, so and the vestibule, vestibular lamina comes from the area vestibule. So both the dental lamina and the vestibular lamina, as we saw in the last slide, basically are originated from the epithelium. So we can say that. The vestibular lamina is formed by the primary epithelial band or it is epithelial in origin. Similarly, the dental lamina is also epithelial in origin. For the formation of the vestibule, 
the, the cells which rapidly enlarge in the last image, they degenerate. So you can see a space is left between this area, this area, which will be later on forming the cheeks, and here the dental lamina, which will later forming the tooth area, okay, or the teeth. Okay, so the space between the tooth bearing area and the cheek area, this hollow space is basically res referred as the vestibule. Okay, so the vestibule it's lying by the vestibular lamina, that is epithelial endoregion, which we discussed earlier as well. Now, after the vestibular lamina, we dental lamina, how the dental lamina is basically involved or helping in the formation of the tooth structure. Okay, so what happens? The dental lamina proliferates now inside the ectomesenchymal cells or connective tissue cells. Okay, so we discussed earlier dental lamina is part of the primary epithelial band. So the primary epithelial band portion that will be referred as dental lamina will be growing inside the connective tissue cells or the ectomesenchymal cells. This ingrowth basically corresponds to the site of the future teeth. Okay, so each tooth will have a separate ingrowth, okay, corresponding to the site of the future deciduous or the permanent tooth. Okay, so if we have nearly 20 deciduous teeth, so you will be having 20 ingrowths. If we talk about the permanent dentition, you will be having 32 ingrowths, 16 for the upper arch and 16 for the lower arch. Okay, so still we can see we have an intact epithelium. The part of primary epithelial band that is this layer will be referred as the dental lamina in growth known as a tooth bud and this portion of the primary epithelial band which is lining the vestibule will be referred as the vestibular lamina. So the primary epithelium or the epithelium is always separated from the connective tissue by an irregular layer known as the basement membrane. Once the series of ingrowth has formed or the ingrowths for each of the respective tooth is formed from this spot the development of tooth will continue in three different stages the butt the cap and the bell stage the name basically represents the shape of the tooth germ or you can say the shape of the ingrowth okay so initially the tooth butt why we call it as a bud because it appears to be in a bud shape like a flower bud later on we call it as a cap because it appears as a cap sitting over a ball like we wear a cap on our head Okay, the last one is the bell. It appears as a bell if you must have seen in the old movies or, or in the past times the bell which people used to ring manually by hand. That, that's the reason we call it as a bell stage. Okay. Talking about the first stage, that is the butt stage. In the last image, diagrammatic representation, we saw a thin bud which was the the ingrowth into the ectomesenchymal cells. Later on, what happens? The tooth bud proliferates. So you can see the bud has now increased in size in comparison to the last image. Okay, as the bud starts to proliferate itself, proliferate means grow itself. That you can see the bud has got thickened enough. Now what will happen? It will compress the surrounding connective tissue cells, which is the normal phenomena of the physics or the normal phenomena of life when the body weight increases of some structure it compresses the surrounding tissues okay so you can see the the thickness or the bulk of the tooth bud has now increased so it will co uh, compress the surrounding cells that are the connective tissue cells okay so the cells which are compressed around this bud are referred as the condensation of ectomesenchyme or you can call it as the ectomesenchymal condensation as well. Why we are calling as uh, as a condensation of ectomesenchyme? Because these are the same connective tissue cells. So we can call them either the ectomesenchymal cells or the mesodermal cells. But as they are densely packed, so we say them as the condensed 
ectomy is enzyme or condensation of ectomy is enzyme now as the tooth bud this in growth has grown or proliferated we refer it as a separate name that will be known as the enamel organ so what the word suggest what is the enamel organ enamel organ which basically lead in the formation of the enamel which is the outermost tissue of the tooth structure so just as a clear point of view you can see the enamel organ is the ingrowth of the dental lamina which was epithelial in origin so this enamel organ is also epithelial in origin so any structure which will be produced by this enamel organ that will be also referred as epithelial in origin that is the reason we call that enamel is epithelial in origin we will be seeing that in the coming slides as well now once the bud starts to grow inside the dental lamina it resembles like a cap kind of a structure if you could see here this is a hollow space which develops inside the bud this appears as a cap sitting over a ball in a kind of a ball so we have different kind of region which are now forming some ball area and the cap on the top the cap is the portion of the enamel organ so we still refer that as the enamel organ but the ball related area type of area which is just below the enamel organ cap is referred as the dental papilla okay the cells which are being compressed around the enamel organ and the dental papilla in this area they will be given a separate name which will be known as the dental follicle if you see rest of the structures are still the same the dental lamina made an ingrowth and form the enamel organ okay that means enamel organ is still the part of the epithelium and still we have an intact vestibular lamina and the vestibular space between the cheek and the teeth the epithelium is separated by the connective tissue by a presence of the basement membrane so we can see here we have a condensed ball as we discussed earlier that will be referred as the dental papilla and the condensed ectomies and chymal cells surrounding or limiting the enamel organ and the dental papilla the outermost area these cells are basically referred as the dental follicle most important thing to clarify what structures are formed from which part the epithelium now till now we discussed about the different regions or different parts which are formed till this stage that is one is the enamel organ the other one is the dental papilla the third one is the dental follicle so we need to now know which structures are basically arising from different parts of these uh, different parts of the tooth germ or different parts which we see here so as we can see the first part is the epithelium which provided an ingrowth that it formed the dental lamina okay so the dental lamina later on grow the inside and it help in the formation of the enamel organ so the enamel organ as we discussed earlier will help in the formation of the enamel so we can say that enamel is epithelial in origin okay now on to the other two structures dental papilla and the dental follicle so we can see that these connective tissue cells basically got separated from each other and they form these two respective regions the dental papilla or the dental follicular cells so we can say that either they are major dermal in origin or connective tissue in origin both the dental papilla and the dental follicle so the two structures arise from the dent, uh, from the connective tissue or you can say the mesoderm that is the dental papilla and the dental follicle so dental papilla stands as dp so we can see the location of the dental papilla it's just below the enamel organ if you look at the normal to the structure always enamel is on the top okay so we saw that enamel organ is also on the top 
that means enamel is on the top now we have another structure known as dental papilla just below the enamel organ so always below the enamel we have two structures known as dentine and pulp so dental papilla will basically help in the formation of the dentine and pulp okay so that's easy to remember as dp dentine and pulp now what is forming from the dental follicle that is an important point if you see the location of the dental follicle it's around the enamel organ and the dental papilla so the structures the total structures which are around the dentine and pulp and partially around the enamel as well are three main structures that are cementum periodontal ligaments and the alveolar bone proper so they are referred as the supporting tissues of the tooth because they are around the tooth why we call them as supporting supporting means that they are basically involved in holding the tooth structure into the oral cavity if one of these structure is lost what will happen the tooth will come out inside the oral cavity it won't be retained for a longer time inside the oral cavity that's why these structure are of key importance so best way to remember enamel ectodermal aneurysm dental papilla dp forms dentine and pulp now rest of the tissues of the tooth are basically formed by the dental follicle which are the supporting tissues that's easy to memorize after that so except for enamel all of the structures are basically connective tissue in the region that is easy to understand now we can see here that we have three parts the enamel organ dental papilla and dental follicle these three parts are collectively referred as the tooth germ because each tooth which is developing has three these three parts separate okay each tooth uh, developing tooth will have these three parts that means if we have 32 teeth all of the 32 three developing will have these three parts the enamel organ dental papilla and the dental follicle so collectively we call these three parts as the tooth germ okay now what happens we see some developmental changes in the cap stage because from the transition from cap to the last stage to that is referred as the pelvis stage we see some histo differentiation what does the word histo differentiation means histo differentiation means we see some histological changes happening inside the tooth germ so what type of histological changes we basically see the cellular changes are basically happening so the mass of epithelial cells are transforming morphologically and functionally into distinct components that means the epithelial cells these epithelial cells which are present in the enamel organ will now to distinct themselves or differentiate themselves so what happens now you can see in this image the epithelial cells have distinctively differentiated as compared to the earlier image so we have a separate kind of morphology which we see is logical appearance which we see in this image what happened basically to in this late cap stage the cells which were in the center of the enamel organ they start to synthesize a protein known as glycosaminoglycans into the extracellular compartment between the epithelial cells that means these separate cells basically secreted glycosaminoglycans so what happened the glycosaminoglycans being they pull the water in the center from the outer area it started to pull the water in the center as soon the water comes up inside the extracellular matrix the cells they move apart from each other so as they move apart from each other they become star shaped cells okay 
Once they become a star shape, and these are the so-called star shape in the diagrammatic presentation, they are referred as the stellate reticulum. Okay. So we have a different kind of cells which are found in this area that will be referred as the stellate reticulum. In addition to that, two more layers also appear of the enamel organ. One is referred as the outer enamel epithelium, the lining in the outer edge of the enamel organ. And the other one is known as the inner enamel epithelium, the lining of the epithelium in the inner aspect. Now the cells of this stellate reticulum are said to be connected through the desmatomal contacts. Though they have been forced or moved apart, you can see great distance between the cells. The intracellular space has increased because of the water which has come inside this space, the inside this extracellular matrix area. The cells are forced apart from each other. They are at a distant place, but they maintain a contact with each other that is referred as the desmosomal contact. If one cell is maintaining a contact with another cell, that is referred as the desmosomal contact. In an enamel epithelium, together are basically helping in formation of three layers of the enamel organ. There is another structure which you could see here which didn't differentiate or didn't change the morphology. This structure is basically referred as the enamel knot. What is the enamel knot? Enamel knot is the undifferentiated cells of the enamel organ. Why we have these undifferentiated cells? Why they didn't produce glycosaminoglycans which we saw here and they didn't change as a stellate reticulum. The reason is this represents that in this region you will have the future cusp. Okay, it corresponds to the future cusp. If you have two cusps, you will be having two enamel knots. If you have five cusps, you will be having five enamel knots. So it corresponds to the future cusps. Initially, we see one enamel knot that is referred as the primary enamel knot. So we don't know at this stage if there will be two or three or four cusps. Finally coming on to the last stage, that is the best stage of the development. Now, there is a transition happening from the cap to bell stage and some difference happening within the tooth germ itself. What is the main thing which we see that the tooth has been converted from cap to the bell stage. The undersurface of the enamel organ or you can say the inner enamel epithelium cell, they deepen themselves to resemble as a bell shape. So you can see here it has deepened itself, the inner enamel epithelium cells. Okay, they get themselves deepened inside. Why they get deepened like this, appearing as a bell shape? Because they represent the future cusp or future tooth. Which tooth will it be? Like probably it is appearing as an incisor or as a canine. Okay, so probably in the future, this tooth germ will help in the formation of the anterior tooth that is the incisor or the canine. You can see here we have two different colors for the dental papilla and the dental follicle. This is just to get them differentiated for proper and better understanding. So still you can see we have the outer enamel enamel, outer enamel epithelium intact. The inner enamel epithelium is also intact. We have some enamel knot which is basically representing the future cuspal tip or tip of the tooth and the stellate reticulum is also there that is the star shaped cell. A fourth layer will appear which we will see in the bell stage that will also appear that will be referred as stratum intermedium so the enamel organ will now will have in future the four different layers so once the undersurface has deepened itself now this tooth jump this whole tooth jump will be referred as the bell stage of tooth now during this stage as we discussed earlier the crown assumes its final shape that will be referred as the morphodifferentiation 
as we study the tooth morphology like morphological features of the tooth so morphologically it is evident that probably this will be the incisor or the canine now we will also see some histo differentiation during this stage that histo differentiation will be like the cellular changes like the stratum and the medium will appear and in addition to that particularly we will see some heart tissue formation happening okay so the cells which are responsible for this heart tissue are ameloblasts and odontoblasts so ameloblasts will help in the formation of the enamel and the odontoblasts will help in the formation of the tetinal matrix so these cells will also differentiate during this stage so we will be seeing two different features the morpho differentiation and the histo differentiation whereas in the cap stage we only saw the histo differentiation we didn't see any morpho differentiation that is the most important thing to remember okay so now as we discussed earlier a new layer will be appearing between the inner enamel epithelium and the stellar reticulum that will be referred as the stratum intermediate okay so different kind of cells which we see that is the outer enamel epithelium it now becomes as small or low cuboidal shaped cells the cells of the inner enamel epithelium they become short columnar why they are becoming short columnar because they are heading towards to become columnar and differentiate as the ameloblast cells there is one point that the outer and inner enamel epithelium are continuous and there is a concavity inside the inner enamel epithelium which can accumulate you can see here the outer and inner enamel epithelium they are continuous at one point and the inner enamel epithelium basically forms up a concavity to accumulate this structure known as the dental papilla which we discussed earlier dental papilla dp will give rise to the dentine and pulp so the region where the outer and the inner enamel epithelium is meeting with each other that is referred as the cervical loop there is a significant value of the cervical loop why because this cervical loop will basically be involved in formation of the root portion of the tooth okay once the whole crown is developed the root portion of the tooth will be progressed from this region that will be referred as the cervical loop where the outer and the inner enamel epithelium are meeting to each other there are two important events which are happening during the early bell stage of the development the first event is you can see here there is no more connection between the oral epithelium that it was the dental lamina and the tooth germ it's a separate kind of a structure the tooth germ becomes a separate kind of a structure so there is no more connection between these two structures okay that second event which is which happened during the early bell stage is the morpho differentiation that the shape of the tooth has been defined these are the two most important events which happened during the early bell stage of the tooth development later on what happens during late bell stage of the tooth development we will see the dental heart tissues will start to develop which two dental heart tissues will start to develop the um, enamel and the dentinal matrix so from this end the ameloblast and odontoblast will differentiate and they will help in the formation of the dentinal matrix and the enamel matrix respectively so this process will be referred as the histo differentiation that is the key differentiation of the cell that's why we refer this state as the histo differentiation so we can say here morpho differentiation we saw that the tooth structure was defined and now we will see some histo differentiation which will be happening that the histological changes will happen so this process for the formation of these two structures is also known as the reciprocal induction why we call it as the reciprocal induction because the inner enamel epithelium 
send signals to the dental papilla then the dental papilla later on differentiate and form the odontoblast cells these odontoblast cells will secrete the dentinal matrix now the unmineralized dentinal matrix will send back signals to the inner enamel epithelium that means it's reciprocated by giving back the signals to the inner enamel epithelium so that it can form ameloblast and secrete the enamel matrix okay so inner enamel epithelium sends signals to dental papilla which forms the dentin and then the dentin send back the signal you can say to the inner enamel epithelium so it reciprocated the signals to the inner enamel epithelium whatever signals were sent from the inner enamel epithelium to the dental papilla now the dentin secreted from the dental papillary cells and it sent back signals to the inner enamel epithelium so that is that process will be known as reciprocal induction now we will be discussing this individually all of these steps one by one to make it more clear you see here the inner enamel epithelium these cells will send signals to the dental papilla till now you can see a dark green colored line which was present here as well between the epithelium and the connective tissue is still intact and present between the epithelium that is the inner enamel epithelium and the dental papillary cells which are basically the connective tissue cells okay that will be referred as the basement membrane okay so now what happens the inner enamel epithelium sends signals to the dental papilla okay what happen next the dental papillary cells you can see they differentiated and form another kind of layer which is known as the odontoblast cells or odontoblastic layer okay so the dental papillary cells basically differentiated to form the odontoblast cells now you can see still the inner enamel epithelium is separated by the odontoblast separated from the odontoblast cells by a layer known as the basement membrane which is present in the form of a green color in between these two cellular lines now what happens the basement membrane will disintegrate itself okay and most importantly the inner enamel the odontoblastic cells which are lying below the inner enamel epithelium they start to secrete the dentinal matrix okay so you can see different colored lines here these lines are basically representing the dentinal matrix which is basically secreted by the odontoblast layer okay and some dark green spaced areas space lines which are the disintegrated basement membrane lines why the basement membrane should be disintegrated this is important so that there is no more separation between the dentinal and the enamel matrix so we can see here the dentinal matrix has already been secreted now the enamel matrix is will be secreted so we don't want any layer separating the dentine and enamel from each other next now the unmineralized dentinal matrix sends signals back to the inner enamel epithelium as we discussed earlier here in this stage as soon as signals goes to the inner enamel epithelium these inner enamel epithelium cells they differentiate and become as the ameloblast cells So we can see here, we refer them as the ameloblast cell and they will secrete some enamel matrix. So the area where the enamel matrix is separated, that will be referred as the enamel space because till now, neither the dentinal matrix nor the enamel matrix, both of them are not mineralized. They are partially mineralized. They are just the proteinous structure. They will be mineralized with time in future. So if we see here, the first hard tissue to develop in the development of tooth is the dentinal matrix. Then the enamel is formed. Okay, so that is the important point to remember which hard tissue is developed first. That is the dentinal matrix. After the dentinal matrix, the dentine sends signals to the inner enamel epithelium to form the ameloblast and secrete the enamel. So the first hard tissue always remember that in the development of tooth is the dentinal matrix to develop.
the whole tooth has been developed that is the whole crown of the tooth has been developed what will happen the layers of enamel organ that is the ameloblast layers and the other layers inner enamel outer enamel ameloblast cells stellate and stratum intermedium cells they reduce themselves and get regressed and they cover the crown of the tooth structure you can see this is the enamel matrix or enamel and this is the dentinal matrix which is being totally covered by some layer that will be referred as the reduced enamel epithelium why this reduced enamel epithelium is important to us because it protects the tooth structure from the surrounding connective tissue cells you can see we have the connective tissue cells in addition to that you have some dental follicular cells as well if this reduced enamel epithelium is not present over the crown surface of the tooth what will happen some other structure could form over the crown surface that could lead to some abnormality okay so that was all about the development of crown of the tooth if you have any questions and queries you can get back to me right down in the comment box i will respond it back in addition to that we will be discussing some histological slides in the future in the coming lectures this was just about the basic concept how the crown of the tooth is basically developing so we made some diagrammatic representation to make it much more easier to understand inshallah in the future in the coming videos we will be discussing more about the histological representation or the histological slides which are basically representing different kind of stages so for much better understanding and we will be later on discussing about the root of the tooth as well how it develops so basically as we discussed earlier that was basically formed by this area that is known as the cervical loop so we will be seeing that in the future slides thank you